When I was a little girl, I remember the overwhelming emotion I had was fear. And in 1962, I was seven years old and I switched schools and boy was I scared. And I met two little girls that would become my lifelong friends. And one is named Barb and one is named Ellen. And we were close, we were close like sisters. We shared everything, clothes, makeup, the Beatles, Barbies, <laughs> you name it. We had so many adventures. We, we loved each other. We saved each other. We inspired each other. And this week, after 40 years, we got together and I want to share that experience with you. We went to this restaurant on Four Mile and we got a table and we're sitting around and we ask each other five questions. I will list those questions below because if you have girlfriends, <laughs> You're going to want to ask them some of these questions. It is so eye-opening and so meaningful. But it's so funny because there was a woman, you know, sitting next to us. I think she was probably our age. And she was, like, giving us the side eye. Like, we were really disgusting her. And we were so happy. It's like, yeah, we haven't lost it. Did good, you know. We, we all have different lives. We took different roles. But we grew up poor. We had horrible teachers that... I won't be able to process it. I won't even know how I felt like until like a week from now. <laughs> my my memory of you is you, you were very driven. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi today. I hope you had a good safe week. I had one heck of a week and I want to share with you what it was like to see my very best girlfriends from grade school and middle school and high school after over 40 years. And I know you all can imagine what what that is like. And maybe you've had an experience like this yourself. But my friend Alan is from Delaware. My friend Barb is from a city in Michigan. And we had the most beautiful weather on that Tuesday morning. So much sun and the sky was so blue and the clouds were so white. And we met at this burger joint that we went to when we were tiny little girls. And even though we hadn't seen each other in over 40 years, we picked up right where we left off. So many tears, so many belly laughs, so many memories, and so many like, oh no, I didn't do that. I would never do that. Oh yes, you did. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> that morning we had our coffee and we talked for hours, and then we set out on an adventure. We went to Barb's old house, and then Alan's old house, then my old house, and then we went to our old school we, we walked the streets that we walked in 1962. We, we shared so many memories and then we, we went back to another restaurant that we knew from our teen years. My girlfriends were such great sports. Now they really didn't want to be on camera, but they, they were wonderful. They let me ask them five intimate questions 
and they let me capture the sound and gave me permission to share their answers. We were sitting around the table and we all had to come up with one word that described how we were as a little girl, how we felt. One, all we had was one or two words and Ellen picked the word dreamer and Barb picked the word accident prone and boy she was. When I look back on the little girl that I was, the one word that comes to mind is fearful. But what got me through life was my curiosity. I was so curious about everything that that overrode my fear. And I think that's still true today. It was late at night in the summer. It was the first time I heard A Hard Day's Night by the Beatles. <laughs> and I love her. I remember that song. I remember there was a swing at the end of the porch and I just loved it. I loved that song. Quality of Barb, I think it's because she always tells it like it is. So what we had to do is we had to name our favorite quality in each other and wow is that fun. And I started off with Ellen and my favorite quality in Ellen is that she was so inspirational. She made me better. Her standards were insanely high for like a seven, eight year old. You know, we weren't sitting around really talking about our Barbies, although we did do that. But Ellen had goals like win the Nobel Peace Prize or, you know, going into politics, making a difference in this world. We were freaking eight years old. Ellen made me want to strive for things that I didn't think were possible from where we were at as kids. And that's the one quality in her. She has never lost that. My favorite quality about Barb was her quiet grace and her creativity. I can't choose which one I like most. She could paint and draw. In a, in a way that was her voice. And she still is a great painter to this day. And so is Ellen. They had that bond. I had music, but they, they had art. Ellen said her favorite quality about me was my imagination, my ability to imagine things that could happen. I thought that was pretty cool. Imagine it's one of my very favorite songs. So that really touched my heart. And then Barb said her favorite quality about me was my perseverance and my strength to overcome child abuse. And we got a little teary over that. You know, one in four women in this country are sexually abused in their lifetime. So my story is not special or remarkable. But as a child, having friends like Ellen and Barb knock on my door and ask if I could come and play, that broke a pedophile's routine and he had to let me go, right? I think of these two beautiful women as saving my life as a child. In the 60s, there wasn't much help out there for us. So we helped each other. We all had adversities that we had to overcome. Ellen did and Barb did. We all had amazing obstacles in our life keeping us from being successful. But we gave each other strength and inspiration. And all these years later, we landed on our feet. 
wir es heute werden. One of the questions was, how did you feel today after walking the same streets that we all walked on as kids? And Ellen went first and she said, well, to be honest, I can't believe I made it out of this place. Everything was stacked against me and I made it and I have a big life. And, and Barb and I, we wanted to make it out too, but not literally. We wanted to make it out of the pain that we had growing up. We had a lot of, we had a lot of issues, a, a lot of family dynamics, a, a lot of things that circumstances, they land us in places that sometimes we feel that we're never going to get out of this feeling that we're, we're not enough. We're inadequate. We're not, we're not going to make it in life. All three of us made it out. There were no other girlfriends I had that I liked. Yeah, me either. Nobody could hold a candle <laughs> to you or... It's how weird that we all found each other. We were having such a great adventure after the last restaurant that we were at and we're driving around. So we're trying to think, all right, we are the fab three. Now, if we could pick one other person to be with us that day, alive or dead, that was part of our childhood, who would it be? You know, the whole, the whole day, instead of the fab three, the fab four, we could not think of one person. Now there are people that we loved and adored and we would say, oh yeah, that person, but only for an hour. Oh, that person, but only for two. We formed our own world and nobody could penetrate it. That's how we survived. We created this fun, happy place. Donovan, the Beatles, the 60s, the 70s, French jackets boyfriends, dreams. We were our safe place for each other. I mean, we were honest with each other. We were, we were brutal. But there was always so much love there. We're going around the table and we have to say, what is the number one advice we would give somebody that is over 60 and a woman in today's world. And Ellen was first up and she said, just do it. Whatever you want to do, don't put it off, do it. So next up, I asked Barb, what is the number one advice you would give a woman over 60? And she said, do it. Don't put off what you truly want to do. Make sure that you're making yourself a priority. So, you know, she's a great painter. And what she used to do is she would say, well, I can't paint because I have to do this. Or I have an obligation over here, but I'm not going to put myself first. I'm going to put everything and everybody else first. And then maybe if I get around to it, I'll do something for me. She's saying, don't do that. Be kind to yourself. Make yourself a top priority. When you wake up in the morning, why do you want to wake up? What do you want to do? Don't feel invisible. You're important and you have things to do. You have a purpose in life. Whether it's writing songs or painting or volunteering or making your yard the most beautiful garden anybody has ever seen. Writing that book, I could go on and on and on. Only you know your purpose in life. Only you can establish what is going to make you jump out of bed in the morning 
to embrace life. Because life is way too long to be miserable. It's too long to just be floating, wondering, what the heck? <laughs> I've had my life. No. <laughs> no. That would be my number one advice. Dream, dream big. And as Ellen would say, just do it. But as my girlfriends and I were sitting there, so many laughs, there was one question, only one, that we all answered the same. And I so wonder how you would answer this question. But the question was, if you could go back in time and talk to that little girl that you were, what would you say to her? And we all had the very same answer. We'd go back, we'd give her a hug, and we'd tell her, it's going to be okay. For better, for worse, it's trouble by trouble by trouble by trouble. So say you did, because it's trouble by trouble by Desi? All right, now look into the camera and tell the ladies that you are going to draw a winner for the Venus Fashion Show contest that we had last week. All right, are you ready? Okay, yeah, I think he's ready. everybody thank you so much for spending this time with us today I loved every minute of it and friendship is so important and that's what I feel we really have going for us here we have a bond here that is unbreakable when one of us falls there's somebody to pick us up and inspire us please have yourself a wonderful brand new week and when you're done with your week, you come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, that's the deal. We'll be here. Buried my fear. We scattered like trees. I want to tell her one thing. What would you tell her? It'll be okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's okay. Promise you. Trouble by trouble by trouble.